Hey everyone, uh, seems like there's been a lot of interest since I've been flying this F-22 and making videos on it. I do appreciate that people like it and have been kind of enjoying that content. Um, so I've had some people ask me about the setup and uh, what I'm actually using in the F-22. So this is just a video kind of going over that, the components that I've used and the features of it. I'm not going to go into like a whole lot of detail on how to set it up. Uh, but if that's something you guys are interested in, I could probably make a video like that in the future. Uh, but for now, let's just talk about F-22 and what's in it. Um, so let's get started. Well, here she goes. This is the Motion RC Free Wing F-22 Raptor 6S version. For the video transmission, I'm using the DJI O3 Air Unit with the Goggles 2. And that is the Motion Sick RC BAG gimbal that the camera is mounted to. The little gray box on the top of the goggles too right here that is the head tracker that's called their uh talio head tracker from motion sick rc and the transmitter is a fr sky qx7 with a immersion rc ghost module a lot of these components that i'm using and i'll put like the actual you know part numbers for those components and maybe even a link on where to get them okay under the hood we have all maytech hardware for the flight systems I'm using a Maytech flight controller, and then the flight controller has an external USB for flashing in the firmware and programming it. I'm using the Maytech airspeed sensor right here, and the Pino tube for that is mounted right here on the side. Also, I have the Maytech GPS antenna right here, and then Maytech current, uh, Hall Effect current meter right here. This is the Immersion RC Ghost Receiver. So this is the actual receiver for the system and the antenna for that is around it right here. The battery that I'm using is a SMC, I think it's a 5200 high voltage 6S battery. I chose this battery because the weight was pretty low, had good output, and uh, this thing was kind of nose heavy. So I needed to try to get as much weight off the front as possible. So I went with a little bit lighter battery. As far as other components, I do have the afterburner lights in the back. Although I haven't been able to get those to properly work with the uh, iNav Maytech flight controller. Um, so I'll kind of go over a little bit of how I set this all up. So I wanted to keep everything underneath the canopy. Uh, I didn't want to have to cut the canopy open. I know a lot of people do that and it works just fine. I just personally wanted more of a realistic look, sleek aerodynamic like the real F-22. So I wanted to try to keep the canopy on there. So what I did was I designed um, a couple of 3D printed parts to make all of this work well. Uh, the first thing I did was I took the canopy off so it was glued on from Freewing. I carefully removed the canopy and then I designed a, um, a instrument cluster uh, for the F-22 and a heads up display and then 3D printed it out of lightweight PLA. Uh, the way I designed that was I wanted to try to get this um this dash a little bit lower so the original one uh when it comes with the little pilot when you buy it from freewing the the original one was like a lot higher and i just kind of figured that once i put the camera in there it was going to block a lot of the view in the front so the way i designed this one was a little bit lower and to try to keep everything um clear so i can see over the nose of the airplane a little bit better and then um, what I also added, which you guys probably have seen in the videos, is there's a little OLED screen uh, in the front that's kind of made into that uh, instrument cluster. So I'll pop the bottom open and look at it from underneath. You guys can kind of see what I did. So this right here is the OLED screen. You can get these OLED screens off of Amazon. I think you can get a pack of them for under 10 bucks. Uh, for like six of them and it just has a five volt uh, and a ground connection that goes to the flight controller with some data wires um, all it does really is displays flight data after the flight is finished when you disarm it doesn't show any real useful data while i'm flying but it's just cool to have something light up um, to look somewhat like a realistic dash i 3d printed a little um, part right here that allows me to take the camera and the, uh, the gimbal out. So if I ever need to service it or you know do whatever, I take these four screws out right here and the whole thing just slides right out. Also the VTX uh, antenna, this is like an air duct for it. I mean the VTX transmitter, this is an air duct for it. It has a couple screws, so that removes 
and then the antenna is right below that. If you see there, it's like this little cylindrical design that I came up with that just basically slides out. So I could take all this hardware out now that the canopy is glued back on. So with the O3 air unit, they're really known for overheating. They run really, really hot when they're on. So I had to come up with a system to try to keep that air unit cool, being that it was going to be inside of the fuselage at all times. So what I did was I um, designed and 3D printed this little duct. It's kind of like uh, a car that has a radiator, that has like a duct um, or a shroud that goes around the fan. This is basically a shroud going around the O3 air unit. Uh, and the cool thing about this is that I wanted to make sure that I can still access the, uh, the USB and SD card. So if I want to get some onboard footage that's stabilized and high def, I can get that off of that SD card. Um, so the way this works is this is a 40, uh, 40 millimeter fan that I got off Amazon. Uh, I think the fan might have been 10 bucks. And I've got some heat sinks that are like stick on heat sinks. It might be kind of hard to see that, but in here, let me get the camera better. In here, these are these are little heat sinks that are stuck to the top of the air unit. And there's two more on the bottom of, of the air unit. And what it does is just forces that all the air that the fan is pulling, is pulling all that heat and air across those fins that are dispersing the heat coming from the air unit. So this system is working really good. Um, I was able to, I, it can go for 15 minutes or so with the cowl closed, with everything off, just the VTX running, and it doesn't overheat at all. So with five minute flights, I haven't had, had, I haven't had any issues. So this has been working extremely well. And I, all the design, this part, uh, this piece for the gimbal, and the dash that I made, all of that I posted on Thingiverse. So if anyone's interested in it, they can go there and they can print that themselves. I did post a link for this fan, but I probably need to post a link to get these heat seats because I think a lot of the uh, way this works is, you know, these heat seats are a very important part of that. All right, so I'm gonna move on to some of the other stuff in here. Um, I found on Amazon they have these little connectors. I don't remember what they're exactly called, but you buy a kit for maybe 10 to $20 and it comes with a whole bunch of these connectors that you can make yourself. So I made these connectors so that I can pull this canopy off, unplug it if I need to. It's not like permanently wired here. Um, the only thing about it is these pins are a little bit fragile. Uh, at one point I was plugging this in and I bent the pin. So because of that, I'm a little extra careful now. I don't unplug it unless I need to. But, you know, I can't take this off and put it back on, you know, plenty of times. Uh, it works pretty good. Um, this little guy right here, that is a voltage regulator. It's taking the voltage in from the LiPo. It's coming straight from the LiPo battery. And it's regulating it down to 12 volts. Uh, I think the amperage might be like 2 amps. I know this fan doesn't even pull an amp. Um, and that's what this is, this is running. This is strictly here to run the fan. Um, and then below that, it's just a capacitor. It's a 1,000 microfarad. I think it's a 36-volt capacitor. Uh, that just keeps the voltage stable on the, uh, on the onboard systems. Um, the blue box from Maytech is still underneath here. And that is still controlling some of the things like the gear sequencing. Uh, the, the two rudders are still tied together on the blue box. And um, the flaps are on the, on the blue box. So with these Maytech flight controllers, you're, going to, you're only going to have so many output channels for servos. Uh, this one here has 10 outputs for servos, and then it has two outputs for motors. So I'm using all 10 outputs, and I'm only using one of the motor outputs. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I had to use the blue box to take some of the additional servos and leave them tied together um, so I don't have to you know, do that programming or, or, or set up through the, the actual flight controller. Um, so now I'll kind of go over a little bit of the features of it and how it's uh, set up. Um, first thing I need to do is turn the transmitter on. So we'll turn this guy on. Welcome to OpenTX. And I'll go here and let's plug this in. All right, so now that everything's plugged in, I can show you guys a few of the settings and some of the switches that I have on the transmitter. Um, I'll start off with uh, the gear switch. 
So right here, this guy here is the landing gear switch. I'm not gonna flip that because I don't want that gear to drop right now. But what that switch will do, it'll um, drop the landing gear and it's also tied to the OSD. The OSD is basically the on-screen display. So if you look in the videos, you can kind of see how I have all of this data on the screen when I'm looking around. Um, what's really cool is that I can have a completely different layout for when the gear's up and then when the gear's down. What I wanted to do was have a layout that was very minimalistic for when I'm actually flying. I don't have a whole lot of stuff in the light and of sight of when I'm you know flying. But when the gear's down, I wanted to have some important information there in the line of sight to help make the landings a little bit uh, easier and more precise. So it's pretty cool that I was able to do that. Also, this switch right here, that is the flap switch. I have the flap set up to move a little bit slower. So you can see here, if I flip the switch, flaps will drop kind of at a slower speed, more realistic. Um, What's really neat about the iNav setup with the gyro and everything, when it's in a stabilized mode and I drop the flaps, I don't have to do any mixing on the you know elevator to flap mixing. Basically, once the flap's done, the gyro's already compensate, keep the plane flying exactly uh, in the orientation it was before the flaps was dropped. So that works out pretty cool. This switch here is the arm switch. Uh, iNav, um, has to have a switch to arm the system you know the fan uh you know the motor will not spin until it's actually armed it does require a gps signal for it to arm um so you know it doesn't take long usually once i set up just a, a minute or two they'll have a gps fix and it will go ahead and arm um over here this switch here is my flight mode switch so if it's all the way up it's in the normal acro stabilized mode middle is going to be a um, self-level mode. In that mode, uh, the plane is always trying to fly perfectly flat and level. I don't normally fly in that mode that much, but it does work pretty good. And then um, all the way down, that's a, what we call a manual mode. Uh, that mode basically is no gyro, no stabilization, uh, just like your, you know, your typical RC plane. Acro. This switch here is my flight mode switch. In the up position, I have your normal aileron elevator up. If I go to mid position here, flight mode two. we go to this where your elevators act as tailorons or elevons. I'm not sure exactly what you call it, but I have basically roll authority on the elevator as well, our stabilizer. And, uh, and then this switch also, the bottom function, I'm using that for different features in INAV because I'm kind of running out of channels on this transmitter being that I have 12 channels through Ghost. Um, I have to use the same switch to activate different features. Um, so right now it's set up to trim out the auto level mode. Um, so that has to be trimmed through iNav. And this when, so right now when I push it down, it's going to trim that. And that's what I'm kind of testing at the moment. Um, but be, you know, once I'm finished with getting this thing completely set up, this will probably be a return to home. So if I go out and I fly and say I lose video or something goes wrong, I can flip the switch down. The plane will come back to the runway and just loiter. And then probably, you know, if I don't regain control or, or find it line of sight, uh, it'll probably just fly till it glides into the ground and crashes. But that's what that's for. And then lastly, uh, this is a momentary switch right here. That switch is my basically air brake switch. So when I come in for a landing, I can flip the switch and it does a bunch of things all with one press. It really simplifies slowing the plane down. So the way it's set up is once I pull the switch, all the surfaces will go into like an air brake configuration. So you can see where both of the ailerons are up, both of the flaps are down, the elevator goes to like full up elevator. And at the same time, that's tied to the reverse thrust on the EDF, so it goes to 70%. So when, once I come in, I land, say I'm doing 20, I, I found that anything more than 25 miles an hour, it's gonna go vertical, it's gonna take back off. So I made that mistake on my first flight, but, but anything below 25 miles an hour, it's not going fast enough to create any, um, any lift. So I can push this without worry. And then the reverse thrust, it'll stop the plane pretty quickly and it also looks really cool Air brake. Air brake. all right so that's the radio setup i have um those are all the features i'm still flying this thing you know learning more with it each time i go up 
Uh, I do still have some things that I have to work out. Um, you know, I, I don't really know why the uh, the afterburner lights are not working with the uh, Maytek flight controller. I think this type of signal that the flight controller is communicating to the ESC with is not a PWM signal. Because if I use a servo tester, the uh, the afterburner lights work just fine on a servo tester, but it will not work from INAV. Uh, you know, so I don't know exactly what's going on there. I have to figure that one out. Uh, the other thing that I'm kind of working out and trying to, you know, um, make better is the PIDs adjustments like the gyro gains. Uh, I have it set up. I like to have as much gyro um, authority as possible, especially for windy days. It just makes the plane fly tighter and more precisely not get blown around. And it also helps to keep the video image that I have from being like so shaky. It's always more comfortable and easier to fly when your video is nice and smooth. And a shaky plane bouncing around with the wind just makes me a little unnerved. So um, I've been playing with the gyro and the gains to get the gains as high as I can uh, before getting a lot of high speed oscillations. I've been using TPA and INAV. TPA is a feature where basically as I give it more throttle, it is going to pull down the gains or attenuate the gains on the gyro. Um, so I'm still working with that and I'm going to keep adjusting that, getting more and more aggressive with it till I can get this plane like really, really locked in um, at all speeds. So I'm getting there. It's really close. Um, you know, it's just getting better and better. But overall, I mean, the plane flies. It flies really good. It's really, really easy to land. It's, it's easy to fly and easy to land. Um, I did do a little bit of work to get the uh, the camera exactly in the right spot on center. So uh, before I do, you know, before the head tracker moves it around or do, does any movements, it's actually like lined up perfectly, um, you know, through that little uh, heads up display ring. Uh, you can kind of see the LCD display and they're lit up right now. Um, I know there is uh, a few guys, uh, I believe, that are making their own um, displays. Uh, I've seen some really cool stuff in the, in the groups. And I may jump on that if that becomes available to purchase and swap this out for something like that. Um, the Pinot tube works really good. Uh, it does give me a good indication on airspeed, and I do use that in flight. I do know that if I fly less than about 30 miles an hour, I get into real dangerous territory of stalling, even if I'm flat and level. Um, for landing, I like to make my approaches at about 35 miles an hour. And then right when I get over the runway, I'll, you know, pull the throttle down. I basically fly it in all the way to the runway and then, uh, you know, and keeping it at about 35 miles an hour. And then right when I get over the runway, I just pull the power back when, you know, I may be five feet off the ground, pull the power back and she'll sit down real, real nice. And then I'll wait till the speed drops down to about 20 miles an hour before I apply the air brake. And that's been working pretty good. Um, landings are not stressful at all. Um, other than that, you know, everything's been really good. I just want to get more flights on it. I have 21 flights on it right now. Um, I can't wait to get back out there, put more flights. What I want to do with this thing is fly it like the F-22 pilots fly at the air show. So I've been watching videos on YouTube, seeing some of the maneuvers they do and how they do it. And I'm just going to keep practicing because I would love to be able to fly this just like a miniature version of the real thing. Um, so, well, so anyways, I appreciate you guys' interest in this. I don't make videos like this a lot, so if I'm stumbling over a lot of words and it seems a little weird, just, you know, excuse me. Um, but if there's anything else you want to know about this, I would be happy to, to share that with you. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your time.